breathe upon your wall this morning. Let not one person live here the same way they have come. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. One more time, welcome to the Blessing Sunday of May, the first Sunday of the month of May. And your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of Law, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. I speak this morning on the subject, the plague of fear. The plague of fear. I believe it to be one of the most important messages you would ever hear just like we have heard several very important messages. And for some of us who have been asking, what do we do? The messages are so loaded. I believe that we'll have them available for people to pick with the ease of the lockdown and also for, I mean, um, and then as we trust God for the end of everything shortly. The plague of fear. We have the following objectives. One, <clears throat> understanding the nature of fear. One, to understand the nature of fear. Number two, understanding the sources of fear. The sources of fear. The root of fear. Number three. Understanding the effect of fear. And this will be negative effects of fear. Understanding the effects of fear. And number four. Understanding the secrets of victory over fear. Secrets of victory over fear. First of all, would be understanding the nature of fear, the sources of fear, the effects of fear, Secrets of victory over fear. We live in a way, a world today that is a fear ruled world, a fear dominated world. We live today in a fear ruled world, a fear dominated world by the act of the enemy his name is Satan the devil who also is the chief architect of fear you know there is nothing called fear in the world until Satan showed up and engaged Adam and Eve no fear In Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, after Adam and Eve fell by the engagement of Satan, the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. First mention of fear. 
in the history of creation because I was naked and I hid myself. Listen to this. The very first manifestation of satanic presence and activity in the earth was the manifestation of fear. The very first manifestation of satanic presence with man was the manifestation of fear. Take Satan out and there wouldn't have been fear. Listen. As God walks with faith, Satan walks with fear. As faith is associated with the walking of God, fear is associated with the walkings of Satan. How many of you notice that children are practically born without fear? They grow up to acquire fear. A child can be sitting with a snake and is not aware. A child will look straight into your eyes and won't blink. That is, they just came very, from very close to God. And they don't know what fear is all about. Now, what is fear? What is fear all about? This is leading us into the nature of fear. The Oxford Dictionary of English defines fear in the following. Some of the definitions I adjusted a bit. One, he said fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain or harm. It's an unpleasant emotion that is caused by the threat of danger, the threat of pain, the threat of harm. Second, he said fear is a feeling of anxiety concerning the outcome of something. Maybe you wrote an exam. Did I fail? Did I not fail? The, the, it, a feeling of anxiety concerning the outcome of something or the safety, safety of someone. of someone. But I adjusted it a bit to, 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 to say like this. A feeling of anxiety concerning the outcome of something or the safety of oneself or someone else. That is, you are feeling anxious about the outcome of something. About the safety of yourself or the safety of somebody. It's fear. Thirdly, he said fear is the likelihood of something unwelcome happening. God forbid. It is like the anticipation of something unwelcome happening. That is fear by dictionary. And all this originated with Satan the devil. I will give you four more definitions, three or four more definitions that will be spiritual or scripture based definition. So it's an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain or harm. A feeling of anxiety concerning the outcome of something or the safety of oneself or someone else. It is the likelihood or the anticipation of something unwelcome happening. Number four are my definitions. Based on scripture, based on experience, and based on spiritual insight. Four, fear is negative emotion generated from negative expectations and anticipations. Negative emotion generated from negative expectations and negative anticipations. Where someone is in expectation of the negative, where someone is in anticipation of something negative, the emotion they feel is called fear. Number four, fear five now. Number five, fear is faith in the negative. Faith in the reverse. You know the way you engage your gear and you move forward and reverse gear moves you backward. 
the definition is not complete yet. It's a very long definition. It is faith in the negative. Faith in the reverse. Faith in the disastrous and calamitous. Faith in the negative. Faith in the reverse. Faith in the disastrous and calamitous. That is, it is somebody believing something that is not to be believed. Somebody believing the opposite, believing the reverse. Somebody believing that a disaster will happen. A calamity is sure to come. God forbid. That's why the devil is the origin of fear. Because he comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. Faith in the negative. Faith in the reverse. Faith in the disastrous. Faith in the calamitous. Faith in everything that is bad. It's fear. Number six. Fear is expecting the wickedness of the devil to prevail. Over the goodness of God. When a person is in expectation. That the wickedness of the devil will prevail. Over the goodness of God in their lives. That is fear. Fear is, is exercising more confidence. In the wickedness ability of the devil. Than in the goodness ability of the devil. Is somebody exercising more, more confidence that the badness of the devil will defeat the goodness of God in their lives. That is fear. That how bad and wicked the devil is will defeat how good and helpful God is. Ay, 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 ay. Number seven, fear is placing the evidence of the senses above the evidence of the word. What you feel and see and hear, you placed, placing it above what the word says brings fear. Fear is bad though. Fear is bad. And I'll tell you very shortly what, how bad fear is. But there are different kinds of fears that exist in the world. I'll enumerate them one by one. The worst of it is number one, the fear of death. The fear of dying before time. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 to 16, it said concerning, it says for as much then as the children of are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear of death, fear of death, fear of death. Especially coronavirus, somebody, you know, all manner fear of death. Fear is number one. Number two is the fear of the future uncertainty about what the future holds is a fear of most young people uncertainty about what the future holds the fear of the future how is my future the fear of the future dash uncertainty about what the future holds fear of death fear of dying before time thirdly is the fear of the unknown the fear of the unknown this is the kind of fear where there is an anticipation of sudden calamity or disaster. Just, just, just start something at the back of the mind saying something, something wrong will happen. Bastard devil. The fear of the unknown. Hmm. Number four is the fear of failure. The fear of not doing well in life. The fear of not ending as expected. Oh, will this marriage succeed till, till we, we end? Will um, this job remain? Will I keep this job? The fear 
of the unknown. So we have the fear of death, the fear of the future, the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure. Number five is the fear of negative predictions. Negative predictions of people concerning you. Negative wishes of others coming to pass. The fear of the bad will of people coming to pass. That is, somebody had said, let's see how you get married or let's see how you did do this or that or people like you don't go far in life. I have been told like that before while I was growing up as a child. <laughs> All right, people like this never amount to anything. Bastard devil should be crying in hell somewhere now. The negative, the bad will of people, and people think that they have the right to predict the future of a person by looking at his face. The fear of negative predictions, negative wishes. Number six is the fear of repeat, repeating negative family history. The fear of re, repeating negative family history. The fear of repeating negative family cycles and histories. The fear of ending, ending the same way your dad ended or your mom ended or the same thing that happened to your sibling happening to you, that kind of fear. Ancestral curses. A young lady met me, or rather texted me. Her mother died age 45 of a particular cancer. Her sister died age 25 or, or had the cancer at the same age. And then she was around 25 now. And then the devil was telling her she was next. Th that kind of cycle. Father rose and crashed and you are thinking, will I also rise and crash? Marriages around you are not correct. So yo, will my own also not be correct? The fear of repeating negative family history is a fear. And it must be dealt with. Number seven is the fear of the past ruining the future. The fear of the past ruining the future. That is your own past. The fear of your history ruining your destiny. The fear of, your, of the past kept catching up with your future and destroying it. That is something happened before. Before you gave your life to Christ, maybe you did many abortions. Or maybe some parts of your womb was tampered with. Will I get married? If I get married, would I have a child? That kind of fear. Certain deals and certain things. That fear for most people is so strong and so palpable. I saw the message of a young girl the other day and she said God should give her a husband who will agree to accept her if she tells her, tells him everything about her past and will accept her the way she is. That's a fear. The fear of the past ruining the future, the fear of history ruining destiny is a fear. But I can assure you no matter how bad that past is, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins will not prosper, but whoso confesseth them and has forsaken them is a candidate for mercy. We'll look at that another time. The fear of the past ruining the future. Another fear is the fear of of ending in shame. There are many people. I don't want to be ashamed. I don't want my life to end as a reproach. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 4. He said. Fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed. So it's a major fear. Don't be afraid. You won't end in shame. It's a fear. Number nine. Is the fear of the night. The fear of darkness. The fear of being alone. The Bible talks about delivering us from the terror by night. Psalm 91 verse 5. 
And in Songs of Solomon chapter 3 verse 8, it talks about the fear, the fear in the night. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man has his sword upon his side because of fear in the night. So there is, there are, there are people who can't sleep in a house alone, can't sleep in a room alone. They can't sleep. They can't just be alone. It's a fear. And then finally, number 10, is individual specific fear. This one is not general. It's individual specific. Some people are afraid of, of heights. Afraid of cat. Afraid of dog. <laughs> Chicken. So there are individual specific fears that are not necessary. So we have the fear of death, the fear of the future, the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure, the fear of negative predictions and wishes of bad people. The fear of repeating negative family cycles and history. The fear of the past, ruining the future, what, whatever was in your history. The fear of ending in shame, the fear of the night and individual specific fears. What are the sources of fear? There are many sources and channels of fear. And I'm going to enumerate a couple of them. Number one, one, experiences of the past. Both yours and those of others. Experiences of the past that fill your imagination. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 6. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, casting down those things in your mind. Now, somebody had an experience where they were attacked by armed robbers at a particular time of the night. And at that particular time of the night, sleep disappears. Because that of that lingering fear. Today is the end of it forever. Somebody has a situation where they, where they had a challenge at a particular place. And every time they come around that place, the fear resurfaces. I'm talking of experiences. Experiences both yours or experiences of others. That leave you with an imagination. They can, they can fuel fear. Number two, the hearing of the ear. The hearing of the ear. What the ear hears. Informations that come into your ear. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 11. I have many scriptures to, to, to read from now forward. So please, we shall be fast. He said, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Things you hear determines what you fear. Deuteronomy 17, 13 repeats it almost verbatim. And all the people shall hear and fear. Deuteronomy 19, verse 20. And, and those which remain shall hear and fear. And Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 21. <laughs> and all the men of this city shall stone him with stones that he died. That's that stubborn guy. That the scripture talked about. So thou shalt put away evil from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. What you hear can fuel your faith. Or fuel your fear. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of the Lord. Fear also comes by hearing. Beware what you hear. Did I tell you a funny story before? And there are people you don't need to go near at all. Because they only feed you with what will what will germinate your fears? I went to preach in a town in Nigeria <laughs> many years ago. And as I sat, after I finished preaching and was coming from the preaching venue, the protocol officer attached to me, his wisdom was to gist me 
about how terrible armed robbers are in that town. <laughs> that was his wisdom. He said, Kai, this city, this town, the way robbers operate is so heartless. It's so terrible. They don't have human emotion. The town has no light. Dingy dark. That was his gist. All the way to the hotel. By the time we reached the hotel and they dropped me and left, the hotel has no light. And I am guest minister from big, 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 big town. And he has come. He just gisted me about I'm robber and how wicked they are in that town. You know, no matter how audacious you are, you see, I'll show you something about David. Who David that could fight lion was on the run at the time because of what he had. <laughs> so I had to put out my faith for the night. So such terrible stories. And I see people need to be trained. A protocol officer, that is not his duty. As if the robbers sent him to pass the news. You see, it is, first of all, the experiences of lie of the past, the hearing of the ear. I was talking with someone today who I can consider, well, some, time, some days ago, who I can consider one of the most audacious men in this whole generation currently. He told me, he said he had to shift, switch off, the CNN at one point. Because everything he was watching just to try to find out what was going on was reducing his faith. Fueling his fear. This is not worth it. I don't need this information. The hearing of the ear. Number three is the sight of the eye. What you see affects how you fare. In Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1, Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1, he said, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid. You see? You see. You saw horses. You saw chariots. You saw people. Don't be afraid. What you see affects what you fear. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 67. In the morning, thou shalt say, would God it were evening, and at even thou shalt say, would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, wherewith, he was talking about a curse on Israel, and he's talking about the connection between the sight and the fear. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 5, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 5, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 5, Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Gaza also shall see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation, shall be ashamed. Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Luke chapter 21 verse 11. Luke 21 verse 11. He said, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights. Fearful sights. Sights that provoke fear. Beware what you watch, sir. Horror movies at night will give you horror dreams. Beware what you watch. One of our children, name withheld, <laughs> watched, uh, as a little child, I think, I don't know how it happened, watched like a movie or something like that or watched something. And then, phew, from then on, it took God's mercy. Every time she was <laughs> hearing the sound of uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> begins to reverse anywhere she was and such a sound dum 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 <laughs> because of what was watched be careful you have you have you have the license over your own life for what you permit into your eyes. Murder sins are not things to watch. Brutal, violent things.
There are things you deliberately refuse to. They say terrorists uh, executed. Those are not things you want to just keep on watching. Because the devil wants to weaken you. And I will show you some things about fear. Weaken you so that your defenses are gone. The sight of the eye. Number four, the thought of the heart. You can think so, so tell you fear. I mean, you can, you can meditate until you, 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 you think until you stand up with fear. Job chapter 4 verse 12 to verse 13. I came across and said, Now a thing was secretly brought to me and my ear received a little thereof in thoughts from visions of the night when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me. In thoughts, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Did you see that? In thoughts, I began to think and as the more I thought, fear came upon me. And the fear caused me to shake. It's just sad that I'm calculating your family history. See how this one died. See how the other one. Okay. See how this one couldn't make it. See how this one. Just, the devil just sat you down to calculate. By the time you finish the calculation, you are, you are zero in conviction. Positive conviction for, towards God. And fear overwhelms you. Well, so the devil tells you maybe your own is a matter of time. That devil is a bastard. The thought of the heart. Number five is the threat of the enemy. Enemy threats. Enemy threats. It can come in form of a, a threat letter, a threat text, a threat message. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 19, Nehemiah received a threat letter. Also they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. I don't know who has sent letters to put you in fear. The devil can send people to text you. One of our pastors, many, many years ago, it may be up to seven or maybe eight years, I can't remember now, received a text message. Somebody texted him and said, I am so and so. I am a professional killer. Hired killer. They have given me assignment over you. Just to let you know. And he sent me, sent me the text. And they said the man called his name. <laughs> I gave him three scriptures. Just three. I said, meditate on this, pray on it and sleep. You won't find him. You couldn't find the man. One sister got a text message. Say, you and your family, your husband, your children, they have given us as assignment to eliminate you people. She told me, I, 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 I told him to reply him in tongues. K-A-K-O T-A-R-A-B-O-R-I Text it. The man saw it and replied back, please man, what is this? Says my reply. So, sorry, it's the wrong number. <laughs> that, I mean, there are all kinds of such threat everywhere. Maybe it was a dream that the threat came. It can be handled. The threat of the enemy or threat from the enemy. Enemy threats. Number six, the fearful emotion of others. That is acquired fear sufficiency syndrome. You acquired it. The fear was not your own originally. Somebody had it and you caught it. Like coronavirus. Fear is more contagious than coronavirus. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12 to 13. He said you should not fear their fear. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. So there is their fear that you can fear. There is their fear. 
in Deuteronomy chapter 20 and in verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 20 and in verse 8, and the officers shall speak further to the people and they shall say, what man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? That is, when Israel goes to war, he said the officers will ask the people, is there any among you who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house. Lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. If you are afraid, leave this war. So that you don't distribute your fear. It is not possible to be a faith-filled person where you keep fear-filled company. It's not possible. Be careful. There are people, by the time they visit you and leave, they left you with the deposit of fear they came with. There are people, by the time they finish engaging you on the phone, they dropped fear for you. There are phone calls you have to cut. Not that you are rude, but you want to protect your heart and protect your life. The fearful emotions of others. Fear is contagious. Is somebody getting anything from here at all? Number seven is the rumor in the land. The rumor or plural rumors in the land. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 46 he said unless your heart faint and you fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. Your heart, the heart can faint by virtue of rumor. <laughs> you know what is a rumor? It's an unconfirmed evidence. That's something we are not sure of. No wonder somebody calls fear. False. The F stands for false. E, evidence. A, appearing. Then the R is real. False evidence appearing real. And you know we live in a world of rumors. There are things you will hear on WhatsApp. There are, as if there are expert demon possessed people. Position for rumor milling. Very, and they will say it very authoritatively that so and so and so has happened. It's flying over WhatsApp. Flying over Facebook everywhere. Some of them under 24 hours you realize it's not real. Others under 7 hours. Some less than 30 minutes. You do yourself the world of good to stay away from some of those things. To do meaningful things with your life most times. Except if you have profitable things you are doing with them. Rumors in the land. Number eight is the spirit of fear. What are the sources of fear? Experiences of the past, the hearing of the ear, the sight of the eye, the thought of the heart. You just kept on meditating and meditating on negative things. The threat of the enemy. My enemy threats. The fearful emotions of others. The fear of others. The rumors in the land. And the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Romans 8 15. He said. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So there is a spirit of bondage and it's a spirit of fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, where we read now, he said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So there is a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear. This is where fear operates in an oppressive dimension. Oppressive dimension. Oppressive dimension. Where a person is literally vibrating before he steps into an end. Just vibrating. Where a person is more like a vegetable because of fear. Heard a testimony of a woman who testified in a real one church. That every time she would be traveling, she was so fearful of death that she said she would say her last prayers. Yes, he enters the vehicle and says, Lord, in case I don't reach where I'm going, just accept my soul. 
<laughs> there are people who live like that. Just, just they are afraid of everything. Especially mothers most times. The child traveled. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's under pressure until the journey has ended. The child has reached. Has he reached the house from the motor park? <laughs> that does not produce any positive result. If they are kept and preserved, it's only by the mercy of God, not by your fear. <laughs> and it has to be dealt with when you know that your own fear crossroad. That is, is more than all, what you heard, more than what you saw. It's an oppression. You deal with the spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody receive something, say amen. Now, what is the effect of fear? Why should we resist fear by all means? What is the effect? The negative, disastrous, debilitating effect of fear. Number one, fear is a magnet. It connects you with both with Satan and his activities and connects you with the object of your fear. Again, fear is a magnet and connects you with two things. First, A, it connects you with Satan, the architect of fear and his activities. And second, it connects you with the object of your fear. Whatever you fear, whenever you allow fear to, 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 over, to take over your life, you are giving Satan an invitation without saying it with your mouth. Just like whenever God sees faith, he moves without you asking him to come. In the same way, where Satan sees fear, he is invited. And then fear connects you with the object of your fear. Whatever you fear is attracted in your direction. What you are fearing begins to look for you. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job said, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. That which I was afraid of has come on me. Look at verse 26. I was not in safety. That is, I was very tensed up. Neither had I rest. I was very anxious. I was not quiet. That is, I was, I was, I was, I was worried. Yet trouble came. That is how trouble will come. In Proverbs chapter ten, verse twenty-four, the Bible says, "Proverbs ten, twenty-four. Can I have that scripture? The fear of the wicked it shall come upon him." That is whatever the people fear comes upon them. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. What you fear, your fear pulls in your direction what you fear. And your desire pulls in your direction what you desire. It's a matter of choice. Many good things have come my way by the power of magnetic desire. Fear is a magnet. Number two, Fear is pathway to defeat. In life's battles. Is, is a pathway to defeat in life's battles. As faith brings victory, fear brings defeat. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 to 2, where we read, and then verse 8. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see CS horses, and chariots, a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord your God is, is with thee, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. Now, verse 8, it says the officers is saying, anybody who is faint-hearted should return back home. Why? Because with fear on ground, victory is impossible. You know, there is something they call cowardice in the army. Where a person is in the enemy lines and in, in the front line of battle, and there is gun in his hand, and there is fire, and there is, and the gun has firepower, and the enemy is facing him and he's afraid to shoot. In some wars, they will shoot him off. 
Yes. Because he is demotivating, he is demotivating both himself and everybody around. And soldiers are not permitted to shed tears in war. That is the closest person to them fell down by a gun. You move. You don't come. You are not permitted to share, share anything that looks weak. Because it affects the morale of the troop negative. When Gideon carried 34,000 people to war, God said there are too many. Reduce them. And he gave him what to, to use to reduce them. Judges chapter 7 verse 2 to 3. Judges 7, 2 to 3. He said, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel found themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. So trim them down. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is of a fearful, is fearful and afraid. Anybody who is afraid, you will be an enemy of this battle. Return, depart early, move on time back from Mount Gilead and they are returned of the people 22,000 out of 32,000 anybody who is afraid go back home 22,000 went <laughs> I said I said thank God thank God I was given the opportunity instead of going to die for nothing 32,000 out of 32,000 22,000 left if you go you you def you will, be, you will lose the battle. Have you heard this before? Hundred sheep led by a lion will defeat hundred lions led by a sheep. So, whoever is ahead that is bold will win the game. It defeat. Many have lost battles in life. Battles over witchcraft. Battles over somebody threatening them from the village and they can't sleep anymore. Battles over diagnosis. But they just lost the battle like left and right. Fear was too much. People failed exams for fear. You forgot everything once you are in the exam hall. You remembered everything as you came out. Fear paralyzes mentality. At least to failure. Pathway to defeat. Number four. Fear invites snares and traps. Is it three or four? I'm a one, two, three, four now. Number four. Fear invites traps and snares into life. Isaiah chapter 20. Okay. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25. Proverbs 29, 25. Some of the scriptures you are going to read it yourself because there are so many. The fear of him, of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Fear in your life brings you a snare. You are trapped. Fear brings you into a trap. Isaiah chapter 24 verse 17 to 18. Isaiah chapter 24 verse 17 to 18. Say fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee. O inhabitant of the earth, fear. It started with fear. It started with fear. Fear and the pit. Where you see fear, the pit will follow it. The snare will follow it. Fear. Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 43 to 44. Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 43 to 44. Fear and the pit and the snare. Again, just word for word. Two different prophets in two different times prophesying the same thing verbatim. Fear and the pit and snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord. That is, he that fled from the fear shall fall into the pit. That is fear, he's, he's, he's running from fear and is entering the pit. Ay, 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 ay. Fear, fear is, no, is not good. Fear is not good at all. Fear is not good. Lamentation chapter 2 verse 47. Lamentation chapter 2 verse 47. He has bent 247. Do you have it? Lamentation. Alright. We'll, we'll check that out. Fear invites the trap and the snare to lives. 
you will never be trapped in Jesus' name. Number five, fear brings bondage and torment. Brings bondage and torment. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15. Hebrews 2 15. Alright, start from verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers in flesh and blood, of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear of death subjected them to bondage. First John chapter 4 verse 18. He said, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So fear brings bondage, it brings torment. You need to see how some people behave when they are face to face with what they fear. Torment, bondage. Urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence. Fear brings bondage. Fear of flying, fear of traveling. Bondage. Number six, fear prevents the possession of life's inheritance. By fear, you are unable to take what is yours. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Thou and all these people unto the land which I, I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river the river Euphrates all the land of the Hittites and on the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses so will I be with you I will not fail you nor forsake you be strong that is don't be afraid and be of a good courage. That is, if you, if you are intending, for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and courageous. That is, you can't have fear and take possession of anything. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 20 to 21, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 20 to 21, the Bible said, And I said unto you, you are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it as the Lord, the God of your fathers has said unto you, Fear not, neither be discouraged. Fear not. There are many things that belong to you have not been able to take because of timidity. It is over today. Number seven. Number one, fear is a magnet. Number two, fear. Oh dear. I missed a number. Fear is pathway to defeat in life's battles. Fear invites snares and traps. Fear brings bondage and torment. Fear prevents you from possessing your possession. All right, number six. Fear is the foundation for disaster. Is foundation for disaster and destruction. Is foundation for disaster and destruction. That is terrible things happen where fear is. In fact. Disaster and destruction in bracket, you can put desolation. Because Job said, you know, the calamities of Job, house caught fire, children, all manner of terrible things happened to Job. He said that was what he feared. That was what he feared. His house caught fire. Uh, children's house caught fire. House broke down. Farm caught fire. Everybody died. In Job, he said that was what he feared. 
everything emptied in one day. He said that was what he feared. He had been afraid of it all this while. Job chapter 3, verse 25 to 26. That was what he feared. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 to 27. Proverbs 1, 24 to 27, he said, Because I have called and you refused, and I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but you have set at naught all my counsel and would, would none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. You see that? When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a wild wind. So when fear comes, it comes with desolation. When fear comes, it comes with destruction. See, don't finish your life. Don't finish your destiny. Don't finish the destiny of your children by permanent fear of what doesn't need to be afraid to, to, to be feared. They say Job offered sacrifice continuously in case my children have sinned against God. In case my, is the Bible said this he did continually. If you read Job chapter 1 from verse 5, 6, 7 all the way to verse 10. He was offering sacrifices continually. And it was so when the days of their feast were God that Job sent and sanctified them. Rose early in the morning offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. He was afraid of what they, they were doing. He was afraid that they would die and so on. It invites calamity. That will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. That was number six. Number seven. Fear is highly contagious. We said that already. Highly infectious. Don't distribute fear to your friends and your neighbors and your children. Or your parents. Fear is highly contagious and highly destructive. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 8. We read it already. Yes, we read it already in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12 to 13. Fear not their fear. It's highly contagious. That is, the fear in your heart and in your life can infect others and destroy them as well. And let me speak to parents. You are not doing any good thing to that child by using fear to motivate them. The baby is crying. You say, I will call Juju Kalaba for you. He shuts up. Oh, I'll bring bingo from outside now. Bingo, I'll bring the dog bingo from outside now. I'll catch bingo for you. Anything you know that is, you, are, you are using it. You are destroying them from childhood. You are raising a fear-filled adult that will be intimidated and timid. I will not be able to confront life head on because there are, you will have a lot of things around them that they cannot dare. Very, very important. Very, very important. Fear is highly contagious. Number, number eight, fear puts life on the run. On the run. A man of fear, a woman of fear is perpetually on the run. A life that is permanently under pressure, just on the run. Judges chapter 9 verse 21. Judges 9 21. The Bible said, Jotam ran away and fled. Jotam the mighty warrior, he ran away and fled, went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. First Samuel chapter 22 verse 26. David was running away. All right. Did I? All right. Look at Isaiah chapter 21, verse 10. Oh, my treasure and the corn of flour, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. Next verse. All right. Okay. Now, look at 1 Samuel 20, 22, 20. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitop, named Abiata, escaped and fled after David. And Abiata showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. And David said unto Abiata, I knew it that day, when the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide with me, fear not thou, for he that seeketh my life, seeketh thy life. But with me thou shalt be in safeguard. 
Alright. Saul. David basically was on the run. Because Saul vowed. That was the man who killed lions. You see, no matter how bold you are naturally, you should guard that boldness. You should guard it. Because fear puts life on the run. You are just running from what you don't... You, you, you. you know, I told a funny story. I, I, I read a funny story some time ago that I was eating somewhere in America, in Houston, Texas or something. Something happened and some people were running. They were just running and running. And people saw them running and they were running. And as they run, ran for a while, somebody said, excuse me, sir, what are we running for? The other one said, me too, I'm not aware. You saw people running and they was running. Fear puts you on the run. Puts your life on the run under pressure. Number nine, fear attracts anxiety, disease, and death. It attracts anxiety, disease, and death. We already read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15. 2, 14 and 15. Where because of the fear of death, the people were all their lifetime subject to bondage because of the fear of death. 14 and 15. Job chapter 4 verse 14. Fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Listen to this. Fear and, a, a, attracts anxiety. Anxiety, neurosis, body shaking, all manner of symptoms, all, ulcer symptoms, migraine symptoms, hypertension, attracts disease, and then premature death. You have heard people say, my heart, their heart caught. You heard that before. They had the heart caught. People can go into some terrible parasympathetic and I mean, sympathetic situations where they are just gone. Some people died before the accident happened. Vehicle is doing like this, doing like this. Heart caught, as they say in vernacular. There are people who came out of accidents. God forbid you'll never be found there. No organ had any issue. Heart normal, liver normal, kidneys normal, the lungs were normal, the brain was normal, no head injury, nothing. Yet they, 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 they died. The fear killed them before the accident. There are those who have died of the coronavirus before, before the virus. Or in fact, they had the, the infection. They, they told them that they were... They were they, they, they had the infection and there was no symptom before. Then the symptom arrived. I'm, I'm aware that there are those, in those days, there are those who, before the, any antiretroviral drugs, people died of, H, of AIDS before, before the AIDS itself. The diagnosis was a killer. Say so HIV positive, that was, that's the end. They started machiating on the spot. Fear. Attracts anxiety, disease, and death. And that's why you must fight fear with all you have got. And finally, fear. Hmm, this one is very serious. Fear can usher life into eternal damnation. Fear is doorway to eternal damnation. You know, God is a just God. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Revelation 21. Revelation 21 is number one. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers that is those who fear. Those who can't believe. Those who do unbelieve or abominable things. Man sleeping with man and so on. Killers. Prostitutes. Witches. Occultic people and idol worshippers. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Which is the second death. Hi. Hear this. You didn't kill anybody before. You have not lied. You didn't cheat. You didn't sleep with somebody who is not your husband or your wife. 
but you, 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 you fear like vegetable. You believe that the devil is more powerful than God. That what the devil plan is what he will do and what God and God is not e equal to the devil. That's what your fear is saying. You have idolized the wickedness of the devil and minimized the almightiness of God. And he said that since you, that is your, your disposition of heart and you believe the devil more than me and you think that the devil is stronger than me, follow him and end with him in eternity. How can you be in the same hell with killers? Because you lived all your life in fear. Kai. This is not correct. This is not correct. Today. You must kill that fear. Kill that fear. Kill that fear. So that it doesn't attract the devil into your life. Kill that fear. So that. It doesn't usher you into defeat in life. Kill that fear. So that you don't enter the traps of life. Kill that fear. So that you are not tormented and in bondage. Kill that fear. So that you can possess your possession. Kill that fear. So that you don't invite disaster into your life and destruction. Kill that fear. So that you don't infect others and afflict your children and transfer it to them. Kill that fear. So that you are not living life on the run. Kill that fear. So that you don't attract anxiety and disease and death into your life. Kill that fear. So that you don't end with killers and murderers. You know, God is a just God. Why he will put fearful people together with murderers? It is in his justice and wisdom. What is the secret of victory over fear? One more time. The scriptures are so many. But like somebody said, we are in lockdown. And if you came for second service in any of the locations, then you just sit and go through the balance of this message and then take part in the first segment of the preaching. Secrets of victory over fear. Number one is the presence of God. Mm. Though I walk through the valleys low, I'll fear no even by the water still my soul my heart will trust in you my heart will trust in you though I walk through the valley slow I feel understand that you've confronted danger or you heard bad news it's natural for the heart to try to jump that is not the kind of fear we are talking about ushering people into eternal damnation no it's not that you 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 uh, you you it's like being tempted temptation doesn't take you to hell falling into temptation, succumbing to temptation, and living in the realm of it takes you to hell. Being confronted to make you fear is not what we're talking about. Living perpetually where your faith in God is practically zero, trust and confidence in him literally doesn't exist. You believe more in the negative than in, the positive, than in God. That's what we're talking about. Secrets of victory over fear, the presence of God. Psalm 23, verse 3 to 4. Psalm 23, verse 3 to 4. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, 
they comfort me. God with me means I fear no evil. Psalm 27 verse 1 to 4. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should come and camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. What is that? One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Verse 5. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. The presence of God. The presence of God. Psalm 46 verse 1 all the way to verse 3. God is our refuge and, and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. He is present so we cannot fear. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. All the way to verse 14. Fear thou not for I am with you. Fear not for I am with you. We'll leave the rest because of time. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 to 5. Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 5. But now thus hear the Lord that created thee. O Jacob and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And, though, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be born, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since you were precious in my sight, I have been honorable. Thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. Wow. Psalm 118 verse 6. Psalm 118 verse 6. He said, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? It's a question. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? There are several scriptures. But let me read this final one. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 16, 16 to 17. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. The Lord God in the midst of you is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with singing. He will joy over you with joy. Sorry, Zeph Zephaniah. Say Zechariah, Zephaniah. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not your hand be slack. Why? The Lord God in the midst of you is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love, he will joy over you with singing. So, Tell them, don't be afraid. Why? The Lord God is in the midst of you. What am I saying to you? Take away two things from this point. First of all, live. Generate the presence of God around your life. Alright? Be established in the presence of God. And it is curative of fear. Be established. Let your life, let your life, let your life remain. Whatever you do to keep you in God's presence, do it. It, kills, it keeps you from fear. Second, the second aspect of it is live in the consciousness that you are not on your own. You are not alone. Anywhere you arrive, it was not only you who came there. Live in the consciousness that you... You are not, he said, Lo, I am with you. You are not alone in that aircraft. You are not alone on that journey. The presence of God. Every time your fear is increasing, 
is an indication that there is distance from God. The presence of God is reducing. Second, secret of, the, of, of victory over fear is the word and the voice of God. The word of God, that is Bible, and the voice of God are chaos for fear. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 to 4 God was speaking to Abraham with his voice. He says, after these things the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying fear not Abraham, I am your shield. Fear not. I am your shield. I am your exceeding great reward. The voice of God, we can stop there now 15 1. The voice of God will show you why you shouldn't fear. Abraham, don't be afraid. The word of God will show you why you shouldn't fear. I got you covered. That's the meaning. I am your shield. I got your back covered. Abraham. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 33, Proverbs 1 33, he said, but whoso hearkeneth to me, that is to the word of God, shall dwell safely and he shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Anyone who listens to me, who listens to my voice and listens to my word shall dwell in safety and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. There is a level of understanding you have in God's word and in God that somebody will send you a rubbish dream that they dreamt about you that you will return it back. So I, I, I have eyes to dream. Don't dream for me. Beside that, scriptures got me too covered. What you are talking about is not even a prayer point. The word. Please look at again that Proverbs chapter 1 verse 33. It said, Whoso hearkeneth to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Hearken to God, listening to God. Acts chapter 27, verse 21 to 25. Paul the apostle was in the midst of a crisis in the middle of a sea. He said, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sars, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. Keep going to verse 25. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss. Somebody say there shall be no loss. There shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep. Why? For there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, fear not Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And oh, lo, God has given you all them that sail with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God spoke and Paul received and he told them, fear not, I am not afraid. You should not be afraid. When you look at scripture or God speaks to you, he gives you revelational light from his word that kills your fear. Look at Luke chapter 12 from verse 4 to 7. He was giving the apostle light. I say to you, don't be afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, they have no more that they can do. Let me tell you who to fear. Fear God. Fear him who after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yeah, I say unto him, fear him. That is, those here, here ones, don't fear them. Fear the, the God. Because those ones are limited. They can't do you anything. Why, why did he say so? You shouldn't fear them. He's now explaining it. Verse 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Pigeon. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not therefore. You know what he's talking about? You have more value than many sparrows. I, I am accountable for every single hair strand on your head. It's reason not to fear. Not one hair can drop without my notice. How much more your whole life? Inside from the word and his voice they kill your fear. Numbers chapter 14 verse 9. Moses was charging the people. And he said. Only rebel ye not against the Lord. Neither fear the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Alright. Be hooked to the word. Be hooked to his voice. Kill your fear with light. Kill your fear with his voice. Number three, faith and confidence in God. 
They are killers of fear. One thing you will know is that where faith is operational, fear can't operate. And where fear is operating, faith is impotent. In Psalm 56 verse 4, faith and confidence in God. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. When your faith is in God and your trust is in God, you don't fear man. Proverbs 3, 25 to 26. He said, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep your foot from being taken. Don't be afraid of sudden fear. Make God your confidence. He won't allow you to just crash like that. In Mark chapter 4 verse 37 to verse 40 and Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 to 26 in the middle of this storm Jesus rebuked this storm and he said why are you fearful O ye of little faith that is the absence of the presence of fear the absence of faith is the reason for this fear why are you fearful O you of little faith Fear is available because faith is absent. And you charge your faith with the word. You charge your faith with light. Fear and faith are mutually exclusive. They are diametrically opposed. This message is important to you, beloved. Because the, the, Satan is really doing over time with fear. Number four is the ministry of the priest and the shepherd. The ministry of the priest and your shepherd is targeted towards dealing with your fear. That's what I'm doing right now. In Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1, where we read, you know, it contains so much. When thou goest out to the battle against your enemies, and you see horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with you, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Verse 2. And it shall be when you are come near unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not. Do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Full stop. That's the ministry of the priest. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4. Jeremiah 23 verse 4. He said, And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more. The shepherd, the pastor is to feed you. Feed you, teach you until he deletes the fear. He shall feed them and they shall fear no more. Nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking. That is your shepherd, your priest. Is teaching you and dealing away with fear. The ministry of the and the speakings and the teachings of your priest are therapeutic for fear. They are therapies, they are treatments, cure. What do you do? Pay attention to, to your priest, priestly pastoral instructions, listening to light and insight from God through them. Messages that are targeted towards killing those fears. You have overcome them. No weapon form shall prosper. And so on as including this type. You are connected to them to kill your fear. So, the presence of God, the word and voice of God, faith and confidence in God, the ministry of the priest and the shepherd, number five, is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. John Wesley said, I am too afraid of God to be afraid of man. The fear of God. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 to 27. Proverbs 14, 26 to 27. He said, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death. In the fear of the Lord. Is strong confidence. Proverbs chapter 8. Sorry. 
Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12, 13. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. So, the fear of God replaces the fear of man and fear of the devil. You can't fear God and fear the devil at the same time. You can't fear God and fear evil at the same time. They can't coexist. The fear of the Lord. And what is the fear of the Lord? Proverbs chapter 16 verse 6. The fear of the Lord makes people by mercy and truth iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. What is the fear of the Lord? Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. Is to hate evil. Alright? So the fear of the Lord is upright living. The fear of the Lord is upright living. No wonder Proverbs 28 verse 1 said, The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. They are audacious like the lion. Whatever tempers with your conscience, tempers with your boldness. Very, very important. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14. In righteousness shall thou be established, and thou shall not fear. Thou shall not fear. So very important, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord that makes you to do your best, to have clean records before God and man, a conscience void of offense towards God and man, the fear of the Lord that makes the devil, the prince of this world, come and hold nothing against you, that fear of the Lord is a secret of fearlessness. Number six, avoid fear, avoiding fear imparting intakes contacts or actions fear imparting intakes contacts or actions already we gave about eight sources of fear when we're looking at the sources of fear the things you see the things you hear past experiences rumors sitting down to think and so on avoiding and then fear company people that carry fear about avoiding them the bible says proverbs chapter 4 verse 13 he said guard your heart with all diligence for out of it verse 23 guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of, of life where you are keeping watch over your heart you are keeping watch over your heart keeping watch over your heart keeping keeping tab over your contacts and your intakes things you are, you cannot watch things you cannot listen to Right, and then you are casting down imagination. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Anything that will temper with your faith, anything that will temper with your boldness, anything that will temper with your audacity, you are casting them down. You are not having any chance for them. Very important. Avoiding fear, imparting intakes, contacts, or actions. And nobody will say you are antisocial, but you just want to protect your heart. Number, number seven, dealing with the spirit of fear. I take authority over you, spirit of and fear is something you speak out against. I reject fear. I shall fulfill my days. I can't die before my time. I take authority over you, spirit of fear. You have no place in my life. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of boldness and of a sound mind. So there is a spirit of fear. There is a spirit of fear. And I reject that spirit of fear. I reject that spirit of fear. You have no place in my life. In Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Mashto Left I say for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But the spirit of but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father. I don't have the spirit of fear. I can't have the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, you have no place in my life. I refuse your existence. Get out! And in Luke chapter 10 verse 17, behold I give unto you 19, behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over every power of the enemy 
and nothing shall by any means hurt you, including this spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Are you getting anything at all? Finally, number eight is making the choice against fear. Making is a matter of what you have chosen. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. When the children of Israel were in the front. Start from verse 13, 14, 13. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Which he shall show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Fear ye not. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. God spoke to Abraham and he said, fear not. This is the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, fear not. Now, if you go through the scripture and you, you have to Google fear not in Bible, you see it plenty. So you have a choice in the matter. Somebody say, I have a choice in the matter. You have a choice in the matter. You have a choice in the matter. You have a choice in the matter. We, 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 we have people in the village, in, the, in villages that are known for fearlessness. They have made up their mind. These are people that will enter the bush ahead of every other person. Whenever there is a need for somebody to do so, they will say, you, come. <laughs> you, you have heart. Enter there. And they will do so. There were those in those days that fought with wild animals with bare hands. You know of the Maasai tribesmen in Kenya who fight lions with bare hands and stick. You can make the choice for boldness. Do you understand that? That is you are saying, I will not allow fear to rule my life. I will not allow fear to reign in my life. I will not allow fear to ruin my destiny. I will not allow fear to take over my life. I will not, I will not function as if Satan is more powerful than God. I will not. I will not, I will not, I will not. I will, and I will not allow fear to take me to hell. It's a choice. You know, you make a choice, choice makes you. Everybody behaves according to the mentality they operate in. Mentality affects reality. It has been confirmed that people behave according to their expectation of their own self. You see, you expect yourself to be bold, you see yourself bold. You expect yourself to be audacious. You see yourself audacious. You cannot be higher than how you see yourself and how you think of yourself. The people said, we are like grasshoppers in our own sight and so are we. In, in, the, in their sight and so are we in our sight. Even your walking step is a reflection of how you think, how, what is going on inside you. Very important. Every of the points I've made is important, but this final point is yours to make. You must make the choice. Fear can rule my life. A man was giving a deadly diagnosis. Death said, put your house in order. This condition is terminal. And he told the doctor. He said, and who will take care of my wife and children? I am not dying. That's matter of fact. I am not dying. That man outlived that diagnosis. And outlived that timeline he was given. Dr. Austin. The mother of Joel Austin, the wife of John Austin, was given a terminal diagnosis and six weeks to live in the year of 1983. Metastatic adenocarcinoma of the liver. Six weeks. Dodie Austin is alive today. I think she's in her 80s now. Going to 90s or thereabout. Six weeks of 1983 which is 37 years ago, six weeks has not come. Alright? You have the choice. I'm not going to allow fear ruin my life and run my life. And I'm going to leave. So, do these eight things. There may be more, but we'll stop here for now. And at any other time we talk about fear, we might now talk about the things we haven't said today. The presence of God, the word and voice of God, faith and confidence in God and the ministry of the priest and the shepherd, the fear of the Lord 
Avoiding fear in patterning intakes, contacts, or actions. Dealing with the spirit of fear. And I want to say dealing with the spirit of fear talks about dealing with the spirit of fear with your declarations. Forceful, audacious declarations. Very important. Dealing with the spirit of fear. And, and finally, it is making the choice against fear. 